All right, guys. Welcome to another edition of the Kendrick Loves to Brand podcast. I am here with a friend, Raf Junisha of Mad Travel and now Mad Market. Welcome to the show, Raf. How are you? Hi, Kendrick. Thanks for having me here. Good to be here. Uh, what's what's keeping you busy during this quarantine? Like, what what have you been doing? Um, realistically, selling ve- fruits and vegetables, coffee and honey, a lot of local products. Yeah. That uh, we shifted from Mad Travel to Mad Market um, because the coronavirus just wiped out tourism completely, and um, rather than just you know stay home do nothing. Uh, kept pushing, trying to think of ways that we could be productive. Also because, you know, people are relying on us, um, our employees, um, communities, right? And of course, as a businessman, you, you don't want to lose money either if you can, uh, if you can do something about it. Exactly. Uh, well, I, I'm speaking as a happy customer you know, of, of Mad Market, uh, it, it's it's really been, it, it's really been inspiring also to to see how quickly you've pivot uh, you've, you've pivoted your business, uh, but b- before we get deeper into that, I, I wanted to go back and ask you you know about your origin story about how you, you know how how did you get started with with mad travel with tourism uh, as a business. Hmm. I, I would say that the it would all have to go back to like how I fell in love with. Um, traveling per se you know mm. and um as a child i my family would always go to baguio because uh, my grandparents had a small apartment there that we could visit but um, when i was 12 my parents sent me on a trip to zambales uh, but it wasn't a vacation it was a real camping trip no electricity no running water bathe in the river only to find out that there were carabaos upstream taking a piss <laughs> uh, yeah and i remember it was it was a very hard camping trip, but it was an, it was a two nights I'll never forget because we just fell asleep under the stars. And uh, I, I started to really like it. So um, from there, I just, uh, my love for working, uh, for, for the environment and just for nature increased. And fast forward to uh, over a decade later, um, after college, just after university, I tried to I tried starting a travel business, offbeat pursuits, didn't work. Um, and then uh, with my uh, business partner and cousin Ziggy Gonzalez, we started the Circle Hostel and that worked. Um, and it was fun. Like those first few years at the hostel was beach life. No? And I remember, I, I think we were one of the pioneers in terms of low cost travel on the beach uh, in that style. Then I remember stumbling upon GK Enchanted Farm, mm. which was uh, also a very innovative tourism site, but one that wasn't selling the idea of um, uh, fun. It was selling the idea of purpose and of mm. how Filipinos could you know, help change uh, the trajectory of the country, help build the nation one purchase at a time uh, based on how they buy, how they use their, how they spend their time, how they follow their career. Just promoting a career of social entrepreneurship, of working with community, with farmers, and um, you know, fixing this broken economy that we have, which is basically leaking out everything that we earn. Yep, exactly. It's uh, definitely on display today. <laughs> uh, speaking of purpose, though, uh, just hearing you talk about like how you're how you were driven to to start this business uh based on purpose was this something that you always had in you when you were younger or is this something that you sort of develop along the way i think you develop it along the way because i remember finishing college and i just wanted to be the president of Procter and gamble or unilever uh get my master's degree but um maybe you know you look at the people around you and my dad was had followed his particular passion to be a doctor at Philippine General Hospital in service of, of the people. Um, mom went after her passion, gave up a career in San Miguel to become a mother first and then later on uh, uh, love uh, a relationship consultant um, starting the Love Institute and now teaching parents how to deal with kids, uh, couples how to communicate with each other, etc. Well, uh, I've actually seen the videos that you post about uh, the online coaching that your mom does. Uh, it's actually very entertaining ah, yeah. to, to see your mom there in the driveway. 
you know, but, uh, yung setup niya with that's, the with that's the real, by the way. <laughs> so how how long how long has that been going on the the Love Institute? Uh, with mom, well, it's been going on. Wow, over a decade, wow. I believe. I mean, she's been in the parenting and uh, family relationships industry ever since I was six years old. And uh, interesting enough, um, that's how I learned how to do public speaking. Because I, I used to cry in front of a crowd when I was younger. At 10 years old, my uh, grade four teacher said, oh, you're going to be the interpretative reading contestant. And then, you know, in practice, I'd be crying right before the contest, I was crying. Um, but it was through constant practice with mom that I, kind of, I overcame my fear of speaking in front of crowds. Mm. And I, I think even in Enchanted Farm, I wasn't the best speaker, but I always got practice as a tour guide and eventually just kind of get the rhythm. I mean, the number of hours, you know, it's just a, definitely a practice thing. All right. So, so coming from uh, some coming from Circle Hostel, um, how how was the transition, or, or or when did you start Mad Travel after that? Well, Mad start so after Circle, it was working in Chanted Farm, and then Mad Travel came in twenty fifteen. So, what, what and, was uh, the what was the inspiration for the name uh, for for the benefit of those who are not familiar with Mad? Ah, well. MAD is, uh, stands for Make a Difference. Uh, we, were, we were looking for an acronym that was kind of fun and a little crazy, uh, but stood for something. And we thought that, oh, Make a Difference, MAD, that, that sounds good. And I remember we even decided on this name over email because we were just bouncing back ideas uh, online. Um, yeah, and, and you know, interestingly enough, when we started uh, Make a Difference Travel, uh, what we're known for today, which is working with the AITAS, was not on the, it wasn't on in any of our plans back then. Back then, we thought we would just promote social entrepreneurship, um, sustainability, inclus- uh, you know, being inclusive, and then connect it to island hopping or some fun thing. Right? But uh, the story of the indigenous people in the Philippines came out. Um, actually, it was related to mom. She she met some she met someone who she thought I'd be interested in and asked me to come down to Bukidnon to learn more. And that's where I got exposed to the Hineleban Foundation. They have a coffee shop in Manila called Hineleban Cafe. It's in Makati. And um, the family leading it, like extremely purposeful people. And um, what they want, the, the story that they saw uh, was very complementary to what Enchanted Farm saw. So just for perspective, Enchanted Farm saw that um, maybe like more than half our land is fertile but unproductive. We don't plant in it. Uh, we, ex- we import everything um, and export our people. So it's a country of broken families, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we've also exploited the environment or had our, explore, uh, our environment exploited by others. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what Hineleban was trying to do was saying, you know, um, our forest moved back from seven, uh, 100 years ago to 70%. Now it's down to less than three. Um, if you want to heal poverty of our people, you have to heal the environment because it's the environment that allows the people to thrive. No? Uh, specifically, this is a water issue. Mm-hmm. Um, in in Mindanao, there's there are two rivers where the record the National Irrigation Authority shows data that over the last thirty years the water flow has reduced by seventy five percent. Wow! And so it's a big number, and it translates into when farmers have to do their second or third crop of rice, there may not be enough water for everyone. Uh, and um, if that's happening in Mindanao, it's definitely true in, in Luzon, where mm-hmm. farmers have to dig uh, deep wells you know, 50, 60, 70 feet deep just to get water for their farm. Uh, that's definitely an issue. And um, with climate change coming, uh, we really have to regrow those forests. No? And that was the message of uh, 
Taliban Foundation. And it had to be done in a way that uh, was economically beneficial to the community as well. And this is where, you know, it's easy to combine that concept um, with the uh, idea of social enterprise uh, of Gawad um, Kalina working with communities. So um, what came out was um, we, Mad Travel started to put to get, blend together two, two, two of those concepts. You know? And that's what became um, Tribes and Treks. Uh, I have to note, though, that it, it wasn't uh, Mad that started that alone. Like, um, the team of Circle Hostel was there mm. in the very beginning. And, and that, that program of Tribes and Treks has been a Mad Travel Circle Hostel combo ever since. It's just that Mad's kind of expanded into other locations that, are, that don't have any of the hostels mm. in it. So what 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 exactly uh, uh, does does the work that you do with the IETS mean? Like what like if somebody's supporting the 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 projects that you have, like what what does it mean for the IETS? Well, I, I think important to understand the context of the um, IETS. So I remember the first time I went there, I wanted to plant a forest already because I saw their land, three thousand hectares, absolutely beautiful. Um, you guys can see it on my Instagram, Raf Janisha, or on Mad Travel uh, underscore page Instagram, so you can imagine it. And um, it was funny because after giving them free trees, they still asked me to pay them to plant the trees in their land. And you know, I thought that was absurd. Why would I pay them to plant in their own land? Right? It's a free tree, right? And um, they told me that, uh, sir. Um, Maganda magtanim ng puno pero wala kaming kikitain ngayon. So, di namin mapapakain yung pamilya na. Because they had that um, urgency to have to feed their families day to day, they couldn't really invest any time in tomorrow. So, that, that was poverty, really. It's like, wow, time poverty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, the solution to the environment had to include an economic um, option, right? And so w- we started with tourism, um, and it, uh, they're very happy that there's money coming in. They could earn in four days what they'd earn in thirty days without us, right? And as the tour progressed, um, we got a better number of guests, um, and we were able to train the community to create products that people would like. So we started with. Maybe just papayas, and then mm-hmm. they start. They start to sell their lemongrass, the fresh, and then from fresh items they move to um, bamboo straws, bamboo cups, and then they tried Coca Cola in plastic bottles. But we're like, don't do that because there's plastic, and the money's going out. So they shifted to calamansi juice, um, and then they then there's honey because as the forest, as the number of trees there increases the honey becomes easier to access because the honeybees are coming into the flower and cheese we're blending. So, yeah, at the end of it, prior to the lockdown, one lady said she earned in one day what she used to earn in one month. Wow. That, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, you just have to work hard at it, but hey, she did it. You know? um, so, I think that definitely there's a lot of income there for them. There's also income for the Resorts around us, uh, the local market, of course. Uh, so it, it was a nice, a small uh, economy. Yeah, so, coronavirus. Yeah. Well, so c- coming coming from that, uh, well, as you mentioned, with the with this whole COVID nineteen situation, uh, and and you mentioned earlier, like how how you sh- how you were able to pivot. So uh, coming from how hard tourism has been hit, obviously among other industries. Uh, what made you decide to quickly shift to, to you know, turning Mad Travel to Mad Market, and and what what exactly does Mad Mad Market do right now? So the idea of Mad Market is um, to connect, to be a marketplace for products of communities, uh, and to do it online. Um, skip the retailer, uh, if possible, skip uh, several. You know, trying to short, trying to shorten the chain as much as possible. Um, I'm, there's a story of, of the middleman that always pops up, no? and um, I just wanted to clarify that middlemen deserve to be there if they add value in some way. Either they aggregate, they wash, they process, 
mm-hmm. or they're just more efficient, right? Not all middlemen uh, are bad per se. No? Uh, but in that regard, um, well, what what we're doing now is um, we're we're basically giving people the option not to line up uh, in stores because it it, it takes a uh, takes a while to buy your groceries in any of the major supermarkets today. Sometimes it's if you're lucky if it takes an hour. Yep. And sometimes for, for two bags of chips it will take you almost three hours. So we wanted to change that. Um, and so we do door to door deliveries uh, every day, seven days a week. Um, we've got a, an, a decent selection of fruits and vegetables. We don't have everything because uh, we're small now. And it's funny that um, it started because um, I was given a quarantine pass and I was asked to buy vegetables. Know, food for my family and so of course I, I i wanted to find the lowest price possible and i found it and when i started comparing with the supermarket it's like wow supermarkets are charging us an arm and a leg i mean not all but some of them do right? and I, I don't know for what reason maybe it's a high overhead maybe too many uh, middlemen maybe it's just high margin maybe it's a spoilage i don't know but <clears throat> definitely there is a uh, space there um, and and then you know as I tried it selling to my neighbors, I started to connect that. Oh yeah, you know what? We've got products in the communities so that we can connect as well. So yeah, we we made a significant effort to find to talk to the communities we have worked with before, and um, yeah, we started we started the marketplace, we made the Google form. And started posting on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. and then now we have a decent uh, we have a decent run. Uh, definitely, we need more uh, technology to help us. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a good, it's a decent cool. business, and I think there's a, there's a lot of potential for it in the future. Correct. Uh, what's been the what's been What's been the biggest seller, uh, and and were you surprised? Like, what what what's what item or what piece of vegetable bananas. you order the most? Bananas. Do you think it has anything to do with the? There was that urban legend at the start of this whole thing, right? That bananas help fight COVID or something. Oh yeah, yeah, but definitely bananas. The other one, um, let's see, sweet potato. Hmm. Those are the top two items that we sell. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it becomes honey at some point because we have a lot of honey from the communities we work with. Uh, but I guess the bananas and sweet potatoes are, you know, they're heavy and they're carbs, so uh, sure. I understand. Uh, well, I, I, I definitely understand the sweet potato because that's something I've been eating every day. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> You're one of them. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, okay, when, when it comes to the business, I mean... Uh, t- taking taking COVID out of the the conversation for a while, what what has been the the biggest challenge for you, or toughest adversity you've had to to deal with as an entrepreneur? Hmm. Well, uh, uh, maybe I'll contextualize it and give you uh, external and internal challenge. Okay. Uh, I think the biggest internal challenge is managing yourself. Uh, in many ways. Uh, and sometimes that's me doubting myself too much. And so I spend a couple of hours doing something that I could have done in 15 minutes. Um, sometimes it's, uh, and, and sometimes it's not being able to manage what you want to do. So there's a part of the business that every entrepreneur is drawn to more than other, mm, yep. more than others. And for me, that was working with the community. So I had a tough time, you know, saying no to that particular side of the business. And so uh, it slowed down. Uh, you know, it came at the detriment to the other parts of our business. I should have spent it maybe doing more finance, more uh, selling. Right? So while doing your uh, what you like and what's fun as a business is a good thing, it can also be a very bad thing for your business. Self-discipline was really the challenge. Okay. Uh, on an external side, uh, 
Well, definitely safety is an, is an issue whenever you're traveling a lot. Uh, and then there's also, I guess there's also the risk of like uh, other, perhaps other people getting into the same industry. But at some point we realized maybe it wasn't as big as a threat as I thought now. But uh, definitely when you're talking about indigenous people, um, it's very, it's a touchy subject, right? We, we have a government agency dedicated to them. It's a, it's a team of lawyers just for them. Right? Uh, there are a lot of rules governing how you work with um, indigenous people. Just because they've always been taken advantage of, mm-hmm. always left behind. And, um, you know, for the most part, just treated differently. You you mentioned something that's interesting, and and it, it it's actually a constant theme of the show. Like, uh, pretty much all the guests have have some sort, you know, some form of self doubt. Uh, so, and and you mentioned it earlier. How 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 do you deal with with your with your self doubt? Hmm. Well, there are a couple of ways to deal with it. One is um sleep, right? Because when you're tired, that's when you Mm. Good things come into your mind. The other is to make sure you're not hungry. Um, sleep, eat. The other one's exercise. Sometimes you just your mind's just tired, so you just need to get some endorphins in your body, mm. blood flowing. That helps too. Right? Um, another way of handling it is surrounding yourself with the right people. It only came towards the latter end of last year, but I started to identify which people around me were sources of like, of like, they'd always put the brakes on something for me. And I, and I was like, I don't need more brakes in this situation. Right? I guess mm-hmm. the other side is also learning how to trust your, your gut feel a bit more because there's what your brain says, there's what your heart says, and then there's, a, there's what your gut tells you. Like your instinct just says, no, no, this is, this is the right thing. I can't explain it, but it's correct. And um, it's a, no one teaches you how to do that. Exactly. I, I've yeah. been, you should Google it. Uh, maybe the person who's best at teaching you that is the four hour week uh, author. Uh, Tim Ferriss. Yeah. 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 It, it, but it's a skill. Right? I'm sure you have it. You yeah, for it, sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, like when when you mentioned something earlier um, about trusting your instinct and and also this this thing about um, sort of sort of uh, is it c- cutting ties is is that, is that too strong of a word or, or sort of like I guess recalibrating the people around you uh, how how did you go about how did you go about sort of you know doing that uh well you know was it a hard mm-hmm. process to sort of cut people out or at least lessen your interactions with certain people definitely it's a little take some getting used to i i think when you when you're along the path of it's not entrepreneurship but when you want to disrupt something right it's uh you're in for a long for the long haul it's going to be a very uncomfortable ride People, people generally resist change. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the challenges is probably like, uh, it's an intensity challenge as well. Like, maybe some of the people around you think you're too intense, but then you meet other entrepreneurs and like, oh, I'm not too intense. They're, uh, we're the same. Right? And so, it's also a matter of finding uh, people with their sense for themselves. I mean, like I, like I'm sure you, you have that. One. It's uh, not everyone's got that same drive. Mm. Right? Yep. And, you know, you're, you're the entrepreneur or boss for a reason because you see it. Yep. You've got that. You have that drive. Speaking of uh, speaking of finding uh, like-minded people, who do you who do you look up to in your field? Or, or in entrepreneurship in general? Oh, well, several people. I, might, I think I've been very uh, blessed to have a couple of people around me that uh, are very helpful. Um, one of them is uh, Bobby Joseph of um, uh, Ralph's Wines. And mm. He's a logistics company as well. He 
he's been a mentor ever since he started Mad Travel. And he's been very straight to the point, very hard-nosed about it. Uh, it's good because I sometimes I need someone to light that fire uh, for me so that, oh, I have to do better, right? Um, and then, of course, founder of uh, GK, Tony Melotto. Mm. Very, very, uh, the, the opportunities he's opened and uh, what he's taught in terms of understanding context and just showing how you, you should uh, love your own country. There's another guy by the name of John Perrine, also very intelligent, very uh, committed to, you know, to community, to the environment. Um, I also, I guess, um, a couple of other people like uh, Cherry Atilana, Pagrea, lots of amazing ideas coming out and really shaping, reshaping agriculture. Uh, human nature, um, that tag team of uh, Dylan and Anna, uh, that, that's uh, definitely something to watch out for because they're, they're on the road to something really amazing. Right? Nice, nice. Um, there's a clan, uh, this one, uh, Good Shepherd Sisters, the Ube Jam Sisters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I, they're amazing. I saw their facility. Uh Given a chance to have a, a one-on-one mentoring session with anyone from you know anywhere in the world, who who would you choose and why? Oh, well, if that person were alive, I might ask for Mark Cuban just because um, Mark Cuban's that unorthodox billionaire that's got something that got his hand in many different things, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm really curious as to how he what his mind is towards people, how he runs. Yeah, he is, a, he is living proof of, uh, he defies uh, the logic of many people with yeah. how he spends money. Uh, yeah. That's one. And then the other person I wanted to talk to is actually, it's actually my grandfather who mm. passed away when I was in high school. I never got to talk to him about business, but he, he made this jump from public school to, um, you know, to a, a huge business and, um, I, I was, and he had offices in Zamboanga, Davao, uh, way before the internet. So I, I just want to ask him, like, how do you do it? Again, what's the mindset? What are the things you need to, what do you need to learn uh, in terms of managing yourself? Right? And um, like, what's the, what's the paradigm on leadership? How do you motivate people? Those are very key questions that I, I still struggle with today. How about in terms of uh, you, you? You mentioned a couple of mentors that you have. No? Um, may, maybe coming from them, or, or maybe something that you've read elsewhere. Uh, but what's the what's the best advice that you have received? You know, with regards to being an entrepreneur. Actually, it's all about action. Remember one story. This one guy uh, was a customer, very rich customer, and I asked him, "Sir, uh, what's your perspective on business?" And he said. Um, said that uh, the most important thing in business is the sale. No sale, no marketing. No sale, no sueldo. No sale, nothing. Sell first. Everything follows. That's very practical advice. Actually, uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, um, you know, especially if you're if you're more more on the creative side, I think we we tend to think. Uh, sort of the selling will take care of itself, you know, if you make a great product or something. Um, but uh, do, do you remember who that customer was? Like, are you still in touch with him or in, in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's not a businessman, uh, Mr. Tony D. He's, uh, he sells air conditioners and construction materials. I think now he's in, I believe he's in uh, real estate also. Mm. Okay. Okay. At 60 years old when I met him, he was working much harder than I was. Wow. Like 25. So, How about like your typical, um, I guess, routine or, or, or things that you do to, to, to stay productive? It's an interesting one. Actually, I'd be interested to hear your routine also. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I watch a lot of... Um, I watch a lot of entrepreneurs speak and think. I, I 
they have a lot of ideas. I try to read up on things as well. Um, I noticed uh, a lot of people, not a lot, but there are a couple of people don't like Facebook because it's a distraction. Mm-hmm. But there's actually a lot of good content on Facebook that you just have to curate your feed so that you get the stuff that you need. Because um, I do a lot of speaking engagements now and I, I do a lot of um, educational programs and most of the content I am able to get from very reputable sites on Facebook. It's just like mm. it, I made it a point to keep following them and to keep the trash out of my feed and always finding a time to exercise. Mm. And I think the, the, the two biggest things that, uh, that changed within the last two years was really my diet and sleep. Like before, I would always plan to wake up at 5 a.m. Plan to wake up for Kobe Bryant. Uh, but, um, there's one guy who asked me, uh, "What time do you sleep?" And I was like, "Sir, I sleep." Uh, he goes, "Ah, that's not sustainable. You can't plan the time you want to wake up if you don't plan the time you sleep. Mm. So plan what, plan your sleep." And I was like, "Wow, paradigm shift again." And yeah, ever since I, I, I've been trying. Planning your sleeping time really helps. So bed by bed before eleven. Some days bed by eight. That's a good thing. Yo, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, we're, okay, we're, how are you? How are you? Ah, for me, well, r- routine-wise, obviously with with this whole situation, uh, sorry, the, the routine has been thrown, you know, off off the rails. Uh, but typically, you know, like in a day, like I, I, I just try to make sure, because before, like you know, like when when I'm handling different things, uh, all our brands, uh, mm. there are a lot of days where I, I do feel overwhelmed, and then sometimes at the end of the day, despite doing a lot of things, you kind of feel like it wasn't so productive, um, and not not because you didn't really do anything, but because <laughs> I know that. Uh. You know, but but because parang, there's still a lot of things in your to do list. Uh, and and before I, said, I used to write like a lot of things on like on 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 my on my notebook where where I keep my to do list, and it's just unrealistic. Yeah. Parang like no matter how productive you are in a day, there will always be a significant part of that list that will be you know left unchecked. So it it started to give me a lot of parang, parang mental anxiety na parang, parang you, you, you kind of feel oh, like oh man, you're, I can really relate. Yeah, but parang you feel like you're not productive despite doing a lot of things. Now. So parang uh, I, I I forgot where I, where I got it from, but basically, parang, uh, on the days where uh, what what really helps me is during like for for the days I really plan my day, I I have like a few things that I want to make sure I I get to check. So as as long as I get those things checked, and and actually there's like two sets of lists now. So the the first list is really more for like personal things, like uh, making sure that I pray. Mm. I get to read. Uh, I get to 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 write something, even just a short, you know, guide like a like a journal entry or something, just to just to put some thoughts down on paper, um, and also to do something physical, like you know, if, if I can exercise at the very least, like just do ten push ups, uh, you know, at least just just something for for health wise, like physical yeah, health. And then the last thing is is uh, which is actually the hardest part na to be consistent with is it's meditation for me. Uh, so I, I feel like as long as I can get you know those five things done, and then for my to do list, I instead of writing all the things I need to do in a day in my notebook, I, I keep it now in like a central uh, app. I, I, I use I use Trello for I use Trello for for all the. Like I, I dump everything there. And then in a day, I just pick like the five, three to five things that I feel oh, I really, really need to do to, to get things moving or, or at least to, to move my business forward. So as long as I get those things done, Muna, you know, even if there's still a lot left in the central mm-hmm. file. I mean, you know, when you're running a business, Amanda, that list will never, ever, ever be finished. So... At, at least it helps me lang in a day. Oh diba? At least it helps me at the end of the day to see the list and say, okay, even if I feel like there's still so much I need to do, just looking at 
those check boxes in the in those you know the, the main things at least those first few things then at least i'll i'll be able to sleep at night na ano na, na the, the day wasn't you know as unproductive as i i make it out to be parang ganun <laughs> yeah i i'm just curious one big thing or like many small things what did you prefer to accomplish uh for for like in particular for for work i try to do at least five uh, major things na i feel like and, and it's not it's not it's not always like because sometimes we we tend to like fill up and, and you know I, i'm i'm guilty of it too but sometimes we tend to fill up our to-do list with like super minor stuff like texting to follow up this supplier <laughs> para lang may ma-check ka. And, and sometimes oh my god diba <laughs> I know that. Yeah, I mean, some, sometimes it helps, you know, just to have momentum. But uh, you know, at, at least with my list now, since I since I know I'm only gonna write five things on on my notebook, uh, I'm I'm choosing like the five major things that you know that that I that I need to do that will sort of move move the business forward the most, at least for that day. You know? And then you know, hanggang, hanggang dun lang, at least if I if I can get to do that, okay na. If I get to do more, then even better. But at least I don't end the day thinking, "Parang sinain ko ba yung araw ko?" Because I only did kaya get ten things out of the twenty that I wrote. Parang ganon eh. Someone's gonna teach us how to write lists properly. <laughs> the skill. Correct, correct. It's actually a very useful skill. Uh, well, okay, we're we're heading towards the 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 latter part of the show. There's three questions I always ask all the guests. Mm. So they all pertain to to legacy. Um, you know, and sort of like living a life of purpose, right? So, uh, the first question is: knowing everything you know now at this time, all the things you've experienced, if you had a chance to go back in time to talk to your younger self for just a minute, uh, let's say let's go back in time to when you first started Mad Travel. Uh, what would you say to yourself? Get accounting software now. Wait. Well, so, one thing I would say. <laughs> Anything, NetSuite, um, QuickBooks, whatever, just get it. Uh, maybe the other thing is enough. You have to take your role as a leader seriously. Mm. Because I'm not sure if everyone goes through this, but like for me, the, the process is very gradual. Like, I was just doing what I thought I was supposed to do, plan, tour guide, sell the tour. Then I started to get comments from people saying, oh, you know, you're very iconic. Or, um, you've got a brand for this. Or I guess some, they were saying it's something significant. And I was like, I don't get it. And it took me a long time to understand it and accept it. And I, I wish I had understood it sooner accepted it sooner because I, I feel like uh, there were times on the, in the journey that uh, I was too tentative uh, as a leader. Now I look back and like it's very clear to me. I should have been the one calling. I should have called more shots. I should have been more assertive. Learning process. But I guess everyone, you know, it comes at, for everyone, it comes at a different time. Yep. And I, I've seen it uh, I remember seeing a lot of entrepreneur friends like their their all their moments and their times came before. Just have to be patient. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. I mean, that's the only way to do it. Don't get demotivated. All right. Um, second, second to the last question is, uh, what else are you looking to accomplish over the next, you know, say ten years? Oh, interesting. Well. Um, I, I definitely still want to prove that social entrepreneurship is a is something that is purposeful, something needed, and something profitable. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping we can get into that. We can be one of those few social enterprises that can really scale and uh, you know, get out for investment. Uh, the other thing is um, I would really like to uh, disrupt the forestry in this forestry in the country improve it uh, significantly because 
this summer, I don't know if you saw the, um, there's a post. It was 56 degrees Celsius uh, in Cavite. No, no, Mindoro. This this week. And I was like, wow, 56. Like, I've never seen that number in the Philippines. Yep. That's crazy. And in Zambales, when we, in that, in that desert like valley which is which Pinatubo killed um, it's about 48 49 at the hottest point of the day I mean I haven't I don't, don't say that every day but the hottest one I've recorded 49 now. and when and then we compared it to the temperature in the shade of the mini forest that we made and it was like 33 wow I was like wow that's a huge difference yep mm-hmm. um, and it, you know, it's nice. It's windy, and then um, a, a lot of the di malamok. This is it's really good. So um, I can see mathematically what you know increasing forest cover can do for our temperature here. What it can do for our water here. Definitely, it'll save you from angat dam woes in the future mm-hmm. uh, and the mesa dam woes. I, I think to do that, you have to go through the education system unless you run for president, which definitely not in my list of things to do. <laughs> okay, uh, b- before I ask the final question, uh, Raf, I just wanted to acknowledge you uh, for the work that you do. Um, you know, not, not a lot of people pursue being a social entrepreneur um, you know, because it, it, uh, on top of all the, the usual challenges of entrepreneurship and running a business, you know, ad- adding that social responsibility is something that uh, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. So I just wanted to acknowledge you for, for doing the work that you do. Oh, thank you. Okay, so the, the very final question is, how do you, Raf Dionisio, want to be remembered? I guess that's... Uh, is it fun or kind? I guess it's a Filipino who had to do you know had to do what was best for his country um, and do it in a ideally a fun or cool way nice uh, yeah. on, on that note thank you so much uh, that's a great way to end the show thank you so much Raf, for your time and thank you for the work that you do um, yeah, well, let's catch oh, up thank you very much hopefully when this whole thing is uh, more stable Yes, over coffee. Yes. <laughs> right. Thanks, Kendrick. Thank you, bro. Catch up soon. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review the show on iTunes. It will help more people discover the show. You can also share a screen cap of the show on your social media accounts. Make sure to tag me and let me know which part of the episode you like or didn't like. All feedback is certainly welcome, so feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Kendrick Ko to let me know what topics you'd like to be covered next and who you want to hear or learn from in future episodes. Until next time, do the work you want to see done because life's too short to not be creating your life's work.